Hey there, Broadway fans. It is Sam Ekman of Gold Derby with my wonderfully talented colleague, David Buchanan, here to run down the plays that are competing for the 2024 Tony Awards, our favorite time of the year here in New York. Um, plays, it is a, a pretty great crop of plays this year, several that have you know, become big commercial hits which is not always the case with plays, but we have some that have like outgrossed musicals uh, this season. So let's dive right in, get talking here about the top category, best play. Um, we have some that are, are still coming up, but we have seen a good number of these so far uh, this season. David, what's your top five right now for, for the best play field? Most of them have not opened, and I have one or two that have that. I, I'm thinking about. So I have out front stereophonic, which a lot of people saw, you know, off Broadway hasn't opened on on Broadway yet. I have that out front. Um, I have mother play in second. That's um, really exciting new play coming in. Prayer for the French Republic, which which is closed, but was really well received to have that in third. Patriots, which is um, a transfer in fourth. And then um, my fifth, I'm, I'm most kind of confused about. Right now, I have Mary Jane by Amy Herzog, but um, I'm also thinking about um, Zsa Zsa's, um, which I think you might have in your lineup, right, Sam? Oh, think harder about Zsa Zsa's African hair braiding, David. That was such an incredible production. I do have that in. I have the same four that, uh, up top that you have. I have Stereophonic out front, then Prayer for the French Republic, Patriots, Mother Play, and Zsa Zsa's African hair braiding. Um, I think, you know, there's... A weird because uh, because the Tony split things into new works and revivals in the top categories, and then they compete combined in all others. There's a thing that happens sometimes where a show will get into the top category and not anywhere else. Yeah, yeah. And that is something that unfortunately could happen to Jaja's because it would be up for writing uh, if the Tonys would follow my idea and just have mm. a best uh, author of a play category, but it doesn't. They compete in best play, which it certainly deserves for its writing. And the cast, who was phenomenal, um, did such a great job of creating all these uh, individuals who exist in this great uh, world that just really came to life very clearly. Um, it's hard to like pick a standout. So then you just kind of, you're kind of like, oh, well, best play is maybe the only place where it has a surefire way to break through. I think it got the amazing reviews uh, enough yeah. to break in here. It will have been closed for a while, but I mean, it's certainly stuck in my mind months after seeing it. Um, I feel like Stereophonic has the, you know, feels like the one that's the event of the season. Mm -hmm. um, Patriots, I feel like has the potential to turn into that. So I'm waiting to see. Sometimes London transfers have the same heat behind them that they did in London. And other times, you know, like they transferred Wolf Hall and people were just like, that was good. Yeah. You know, it didn't have like the sold out, you know, hit must see thing going for it that didn't London. So I'm kind of waiting to see on Patriots that could turn into something. Um, and I feel like prayer for the French Republic just feels so timely, uh, yeah. especially all the conversations, you know, about Israel and Gal uh, Gaza um, conflict going on right now. That is so omnipresent in our news cycle directly feeds into this play and I I remember seeing it and both at intermission and directly afterwards people were like nonstop talking about <clears throat> their fears and their worries and relating it to right now so <clears throat> I feel like that's definitely in the conversation um if you know if there is a uh, one of those that opens up a slot that opens up I am wondering if a comedy could break through there were um the cottage which was very early in the season was just like a lovely throwback to mm -hmm. uh you know a classic farce that we don't really see that often and it was just like you know you walk in and it's like oh my god there's a set there's a giant set we have someone not that there's anything wrong with you know the minimalist approach um but it was just we've had a lot of them so it's nice to see this really big show a really big play uh with a really great cast of comedians um and i need that with danny devito was very 
successful for roundabout. So does anything, what's like the most likely candidate down there outside of the top five that could break through for you? Oh, I don't know. I think the two you mentioned are are this are the stronger of the of the kind of lower in our odds. Um, the cottage, you make a good case for the cottage, and also the fact that you know it's it's a throwback farce. Who who doesn't love a farce? You know, um, with a great ensemble. Um, if they had an ensemble award, you know, they they don't. Speaking of categories that that don't exist, but maybe should. You know, a lot of these play ensembles are just so incredibly strong. Um, so yeah, on, on the merit of that, you know, to your point about if you can't maybe single out one actor in some of these categories, maybe you, you know, kind of honor the, you know, the work as a whole, um, you know, there's some potential there, but I feel pretty good about the four of the five. And in that fifth slot, I think will be, um, an MTC, uh, production. So either way, I think they'll, they'll be happy to be in best play. Yeah. I also really liked Grey House, I will just mm. say. Um, I think it will it should definitely get into like <clears throat> excuse me, sound design, set design, mm -hmm. lighting, all really strong. I don't know if everyone will go for like a thriller, uh right. kind of a horror-tinged play, but uh for best play, but it may have uh, a good uh crop of nominations below the line. Um I also want to talk about play revival for a minute because a lot of us assumed appropriate might be in best play, but we, we got word that the Tony administration felt otherwise and they've thrown it into <laughs> revival. And I will say if they're putting that in revival, it's not guaranteed that Mary Jane will stay in best play True. either because True. it has a similar production trajectory yeah. to appropriate and Right now, there's just five shows competing for revival of a play. That only gets us three nomination slots based on the Tony's rule. Um, but if they also slot Mary Jane in here, then they get four. They're, they have just enough to get four slots. So I just have a hunch Mary Jane might be moving. Mm. So keep an eye on the Prediction Center uh, and the Tony eligibility rulings because I just have a hunch that's coming down the pike. But working with these five, what are your what are your three, David? This is tough because I think they're all very <clears throat> strong contenders. Um, I have appropriate appropriate uh, in in first right now. I have the sight unseen Uncle Vanya, um, just based on you know the the kind of strength of the the creative team, the ensemble, Lincoln Center Theater. Um, I have Pearly Victorious. I think that's absolutely getting nominated, um, which means I'm leaving out. Um, an enemy of the people and doubt, which mm -hmm. are both, you know, in my opinion, very strong productions. So that doesn't feel, it doesn't sit right with me to have, I'll, I'll put it this way. I don't, with the exception of Uncle Vanya, which we haven't seen, it it would be, it feels wrong to leave out any of those productions. So mm -hmm. it's it's a hard, a hard decision. Um, what are your three? Yeah, um, I have appropriate, pearly victorious, and an enemy of the people mm. right now. I can't imagine uh, appropriate is the huge breakout success uh, of the season in terms of plays. So successful that they're moving it from the second stage uh, nonprofit production to a commercial production this spring. So it will still be running uh, at the time of Tony nominations. Um, it has massive box office every week. So that just feels like, uh, and Brandon Jenkins Jacobs has, you know, done so much great work and I think they'll want to recognize him. Pearly Victorious was also uh, really well received. Two really incredible central performances in there and just uh, was able to be really incredibly funny while also has a message behind it. It's also a play we don't see very often. So it has all the makings of a nominee there. The third one is really hard. Um, I'm going with an enemy of the people for now because it feels very timely, unfortunately, that in the 19th century, they were still dealing with like all the same things we're dealing with now, which is why they brought the playback. It also is a new translation by Amy Herzog uh, of Ibsen's work. So because of that, I think she gets on the ballot. Yeah, uh, It's a similar to like if it had never been formed on Broadway before. So I think that would make her uh, a Tony nominee for this, which might be appealing to people 
and it's a like it's also a wildly successful production uh a lot of it due to its stars uh but uncle vanya is like the great unknown yeah you know it's like based on pedigree alone i should probably switch to uncle vanya just based on everyone who's putting that together that's also a new translation heidi shrek um is doing that the cast is insane for that one <laughs> uh it is the like most wild amalgam of different people and acting styles I've ever seen. I can't wait to see it. Um, and I guess I, that leaves doubt just to be pushed out. I get. I think I talked about this in our um, play revival or musical revival conversation, but I feel like the revival categories are very tied to the director, uh, the director's concept. And I feel like Doubt was a really great production, but didn't do anything like dramatically radically different you know like no one was coming in like jamie lloyd and just putting like i'm just gonna have a chair on the stage it's not that type of production it's just a really you know great production of the play so i feel like that could be a case where it falls out of revival not necessarily for the actors and other elements but it may not be enough to put it in the revival race yeah, I wonder too, <clears throat> just one point on doubt, which is the original is not such a distant memory. So for nominators who right. maybe saw both productions, you know, if this one did not live up to their memory of the original, which was, you know, acclaimed in, in every regard, you know, maybe it gets left out. You know, there's so few nominators that a few votes difference, you know, mm -hmm. makes all the difference. So I could see that you know, being an issue, whereas some of these other shows are either totally new kind of rewritings and new interpretations or something they've maybe never seen staged before. Yeah, it's a little unfair because the play is called, uh, the category is called Revival, <laughs> but I think voters still are very drawn to newness. Mm. Either give us a really bold new take on something we're familiar with, or, you know, give us a play that we haven't seen in a while that's really rarely produced um and let's re-examine that in today's light so yeah. that's why I kind of feel like doubt might be on the outside looking in mm. I think maybe where it's not is in lead actress in a play where sadly Tyne Daly was originally supposed to open this show but had to withdraw um due to illness um unfortunately but Amy Ryan stepped in with a week's notice i believe and like not a week until previews or whatever like a week and like you have to step on stage right now which is crazy because sister elwish just is not a small role by any means does that help her in this category i think so i think she's i think she's getting nominated i think you know it, it can never hurt to have a narrative like that you know um you know really being um a trooper and stepping in and and helping to kind of save a production that's so far you know down the track um let alone the fact that she's doing good work so i don't want to diminish you know the, the yeah. performance at all um i think, and I think that did help uh, that helped latonya richardson jackson mm. when she stepped in uh for a role and then she got nominated yeah, so my four, because, you know, we're, we're working under the assumption that there are going to be four nominees, um, unless there's a tie. Um, mm -hmm. My four are Sarah Paulson, Jessica Lange, a nice little um, American Horror Story, you know, showdown in, in this category, um, Amy Ryan, and then I have Rachel McAdams, um, which leaves out, um, again, we've been talking about Uncle Vanya, Sight Unseen, Anika Noni Rose, who, you know, may be ruled um, eligible in this category. Um, we haven't seen that performance, but, you know, to me, this category and maybe actor, but even more so this category screams a place where we're going to get um, a quote unquote statistical tie where we will yeah. have five nominees. Um, you know, it's not a guarantee. It doesn't happen all the time, but it happens with some frequency. And I just, you know, there's so many wonderful actresses in, in this race that I wouldn't be surprised um, if that happened. But what is your what are your four? Look I like? I have the same four. I I have um, good friend Sarah Paulson, Jessica Lang, bringing their <laughs> their friendly Emmy rivalry over to the Tonys, um, and I think they're going to certainly be nominated. I don't. I haven't seen Mother play, obviously, so we don't know what the script is like. But yeah. based on what I've heard, Jessica Lang is playing a character over. A, a long stretch of time throughout many ages so that alone is kind of like voter bait right there 
And Sarah Paulson is just out of control and appropriate. So I have her, she's giving a, an incredible performance uh, in the number one play of the season, I would say. So mm -hmm. she's definitely getting in. Um, and then f filling it out with Rachel McAdams and, and Amy Ryan. Um, I will say we should never count out Laurie Metcalf at the Tonys. <laughs> I know, like, I wouldn't necessarily have put this character in lead, to be honest, because I feel like Tatiana Maslany is really more the central figure of Grey House. Um, but Laurie was above the title. She's a huge star. And they really nominate her for everything. Like, every single thing she does. So uh, don't don't count out just because Grey House was super long ago that, uh, that she is just not in the running because she's Laurie Metcalf and uh, exists with her own rules here. Um, and I will also say Laura Bell Bundy was amazing in The Cottage. I don't think she's, that was a big ensemble piece, so she's not necessarily as dominant a lead as some of these other women are in their shows, but is still the central role. And it's like, I think it's 15 years since she's been on Broadway. This was her big return um, since starring in, in Legally Blonde and getting a Tony nomination. So not outside the realm of possibility, especially if you're talking about those statistical ties which are easy to come by with with the tony nominations uh one of these women who's a little bit further down on our odds is, is certainly still capable of getting in um <clears throat> let's move over to another category with four slots right now which is lead actor in a play what do you have out front there i have in a very close one and two leslie odom jr for Pearly Victorious mm -hmm. and Jeremy Strong, Enemy of the People. Um, I have Steve Carell mm -hmm. in Francovania. You know, we'll we'll see how that shakes out. Um, but it's exciting casting. Um, and then I have Michael Stuhlbarg for Patriots as my as my four, which leaves out um Liev Schreiber for Doubt um and Danny DeVito oh, yeah. for I Need That. But you know, that's I, I feel pretty comfortable with those four having not seen. I haven't seen Patriots, obviously, either. So two of those four I haven't seen. Um, so we'll see. But what what are your four? I have the same four. Um, Jeremy Strong, Leslie Owen Jr., Michael Stuhlbarg, and Steve Carell. Mm -hmm. It's a little bit of a gamble, um, but I, I know from folks who saw Patriots abroad, uh, that was Tom Hollander who did it over mm -hmm. there. And... He, everyone was like, he walks away with the show. And it is an incredible character for any actor. And Michael Stuhlbarg is an incredible performer. So that has the makings of turning into something that uh, would be, you know, the big uh, scene chewy great lead that, that takes over. I feel like if Pearly Victorious was still running, Leslie would definitely be my number one. Uh, I think he'll certainly get nominated. I'm like... I'm just wondering if people will will give him the the win after because a lot of he has a very big arc in that show and he does a lot of really there's big work but there's also a lot of really nuanced work along the way and I worry that that's the type of thing uh the style of acting that like can fade from people's minds all the little details that you fall in love with while you watch it and even in you know the time immediately after but months and months later some of those details kind of fade so I have him nominated but not winning and Steve Carell is a really unknown I've never seen him on stage so like who knows what he's going to be like uh great character but I I'm really kind of sad not to have Leah Schreiber in my lineup he's you know been here before and I think does a great job with with that role in doubt um and a great job at playing it ambiguously, mm. which I feel like a lot of people with Father Flynn like lean heavily one way or the other. And I felt like he played it, you know, very kind of up in the air, found a way to to really not come down on either side. Um, I feel like those are the five to me. I know Danny DeVito has been nominated before, so we shouldn't count him out. Um but is there anyone else you see that could break in? Um, I'm going to look at our odds just to see who else I might be overlooking. Um, I feel like that's a very strong, I feel like that's a strong four with the two 
you know, those are the two maybe spoilers or, you know, if there is a fifth fifth contender um, because of a tie. Um, how about you? Is there anybody else that, you know? Well, it's hard. There's not a lot of contenders for lead actor. Yeah, uh, yeah. If this is how all the eligibility is going and no one is, I mean, Steve Perel is obviously set on scene. No one has given a bad performance for right. anything, <laughs> you know, like, Paul Sparks uh, was great in Grey House. I don't think he's quite lead enough for where this category is right now. Um, again, I would say like Tatiana was the most central figure in that show. He is great and has a ton to do, but like looking at the other roles that are in contention, I just don't think he has necessarily enough material. Um, and Eric McCormick, it's always, I think, a little bit of a hurdle for comedies. In the play category, they really like to see like your big dramatic shouting, uh, heavy emotion scene for for these roles. Uh, so that's hard. And I would say, the cottage like there. I would kind of say that Laura Bell Bundy is again more of a lead, even though they're the two most central figures. I think it kind of ends up being about her story and a little bit about female empowerment at the mm -hmm. end. So. They're the ones who I like have at the bottom, but it's a small field with statistical ties being very possible. Um, and no one has given a bad performance here. So anything can happen. Yeah. Um, let's move on. I talked about Pearly Victorious a little bit, and I'm now just going to contradict myself <laughs> with featured actress in a play because I have Carrie Young in first place for Pearly Victorious, which I know is a closed show. But she gave such a like big performance in that, a, a big one that I can still recall very clearly. And she's been nominated every time she's been on Broadway. This, uh, I can't imagine her not being nominated. And maybe third time is a charm. She's just really on a hot streak right now. Yeah, I agree. Think? Yeah, I agree that they just love her in, in everything. And then couple kind of the fact that she's like on the rise and getting recognition for other plays, couple it with her performance in this. And I think she's very win competitive. Um, I think, you know, there's there's a lot of contenders yet to see. So I don't know totally. if I will keep her out front, you know, for for the duration, but no question she is at in the top of the the top of the um category. Um I also have and this one, I think if there's any categories that I'm most unsure about, it's the featured um, in, in plays out of all the all There's the a lot of like fluidity to these, I think. Yes, absolutely. So I'm I'm maybe confident in three of my five, but I have um, Celia Keenan-Bolger for Mother Play just because we don't even know what that role, you know, looks like, but we know that they love her and she's a Tony winner. Um, I have Jane Howdy Shell for Uncle Vanya. And then my other two, uh, you know, I, I, I'll put the names out there, but, you know, I don't have anybody from Stereophonic, which feels wrong. Mm -hmm. um, so I have Allison Pill for Uncle Vanya, Sight Unseen, and I have Zoe Kazan for Doubt. Um, there's another um, performer in Doubt who probably I will switch in, um, you know, the, the other character in that play. I'll yes, probably Quincy swap Tyler out. Bernstein, who's exactly. fabulous in it. So I will probably put her in and take Zoe Kazan out. Um, but, you know, I, I don't feel good about, you know, leaving so many so many of the contenders out here so what are your five and then we'll, we'll go um, from there i well i have carrie young francis benamu from uh prayer for the french yeah. republic celia keenan bolger for mother play jane howdy shell for uncle vanya and dana steingold for the cottage mm. um wow. so very different uh <laughs> that's good though uh because there's a lot of potential here i think francis yeah. benamu um i believe i'm saying that right but apologies if not just has uh she, uh she won something for this role was it in uh the lortel uh but for the off-broadway production mm -hmm. she has a massive 20 minute monologue that just like sums up all of the um just like frustration and impossibility of the conflict in the middle east and how it relates to today and you just kind of look at it and it's like, I don't know how the hell you memorize that. <laughs> I don't know how you put so much uh, emotion and layering in there because it's almost like she's kind of just like listing things, but it just feels 
so uh, immediate, and I think she does a, a great job with that character. Um, Jane Howdy Shell is sight unseen that I've kind of thrown in there because she's Jane Howdy Shell, mm -hmm. and they love her, and she always does uh, incredible work. And then Dana Steingold's is the one nomination I have for The Cottage right now, which is a bit of a risk, but she just reminds me, there's a couple precedents for her, like one of them reminding me of Megan Hilty in Noises Off as mm. the character in the big ensemble comedy who's just like always on and always has business that they're doing. She created like, she was kind of the unknown in the all-star cast and totally stole every single moment she was in. You just couldn't take your eyes off of her, even when she wasn't saying anything. Um, and it, in that sense, it feels a little bit too like uh, Micah Stock for It's Only a Play. Another all-star comedy, Nathan Lane, like all of these like legends in it. And yet the only nomination it got was for the relative newcomer, Mike Stock and featured actor uh, for, for stealing all of his scenes. So I know it's definitely a bit of a risk to call her um, not confident in it, but I can totally see that coming to pass. Um, yeah, I know a lot of people like Sarah Pigeon for Stereophonic. Yeah. Um, we haven't talked about Natalie Gold in Appropriate, who is amazing. And that's like, if that is one of the top plays of the season, uh, I think that will be one of the top nomination getters. Yeah. Then we should probably be paying more attention to Natalie Gold. Um, and I'm really, uh, I want to put someone from Jaja's African hair braiding in. I just don't know who it would be. I guess Dominique Thorne is really the most central figure in the play. Um, and then I think Zenzi Williams has probably some of the, like the more typical uh, featured actress nomination type of material. And then there's Lakeisha May who like plays a, several roles and is very funny. So I don't know which, <laughs> I can't decide. Um, this is why we need a best ensemble category. Totally. They're, they're all fabulous. But who, who are you also thinking of who's down there? Many of those names. Um, you don't have Quincy Tyler Bernstein, do you, for Doubt? No, and I should. I mean, that's the, like, that role won yeah. Adrian Lennox a Tony. It basically, like, put Viola Davis on the map for the movie. It is, like, she only has one scene, but it is the scene of the play. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah so I'm, I really want to slot her in. Um, like you said, there's some from appropriate, um, some performers here. Natalie Gold, in particular, I think it has potential. Um, I'm just really watching out for, as you said, like I'm just repeating a lot of the names that that you said, but stereophonic I haven't seen. So when I see it, I'm I'm hoping to have some clarity on what featured performers from that. Because I do think, you know, for me, that's the play sight unseen that's out front for best play. I think, like you said, mm -hmm. it, it has, you know, it, it can become an event. And I think if that's the case, it's gonna pick up some acting nominations and I don't have I don't think I, ha I don't have any of the actors slotted in yet so I have to make room for one or more yeah um I will we'll move on where I do have someone I think for stereophonic mm. but I, I will also call out Betsy Idem for mm. prayer for the French Republic who is probably like the lead I don't think we got eligibility rulings for for that she could go either way in the rulings but um she does a great job uh, in that show and I think was also nominated for the off-Broadway mm. version. And we have her all, like she's way down at 100 to 1 odds down here and probably much lower than she should be based on what she has to work with in that play. So this is one I, I feel good about Carrie Young. Yes. Um, <laughs> and then like end of list. And actually, I <laughs> I feel like I feel pretty good about Frances just because I think she has one of the top moments of the year. I know it'll be closed by the time voting happens, but this is probably one I'll switch around quite a bit. Yeah. Um, speaking of uh, stereophonic, I do have a stereophonic person in featured actor in a play. My lineup there, I have Will Keen in Patriots, Corey Stoll, appropriate Jim Parsons' mother play, Will Brill, stereophonic, mm. and Alfred Molina for Uncle Vanya. Okay, I have, yeah, I have Jim Parsons' mother play 
just because I have Corey Stoll. I have Alfred Molina. I have Will Keane. And then that fifth slot I am totally playing with. Um, I could see uh, a whole host of people. Will Brill is um, a wonderful performer, so I'd love to yeah. see him get nominated. Um, I think Michael Imperiali has a shot for Enemy of the People yes. if they if they love that production. You know, I think it, it it's he's not going to miss the nomination if they're if they're on board with that production. Um, I think Anthony Edwards, you know, had had a good turn in Prayer for the French Republic, um, and that was really you know kind of great casting. I think he could he could get in, especially if they really love that show. Um, I don't know. So there's there's a lot of people I want to put in that fifth spot that I'm just not confident yet. I had a different, I've been playing with different people in okay. Prayer for the French Republic. I had um, uh, Arya Shagasemi, mm. uh, if I'm saying your name correctly. Um, I feel like he has kind of the most empathetic mm. role out of all the men and has the most stage time out of all the men. So I I had him in for a while and have been playing around with, with stuff. So I've taken him out, but I'm not counting him out. Um, Michael Imperioli was phenomenal in Enemy of the People. Uh, coming off of White Lotus, has a little bit of a, a hot streak going. I think he could certainly get in. And I know it was a long time ago, but I do like all the guys from The Shark is Broken. Yeah. And it's that classic thing of like they love seeing actors transform and they all become uh you know the actors from jaws like they become these men that we know very well and it's really fun to see that i think if the shark is broken was going to play anywhere in the nominations it would be with the actors i just feel like i'm not quite sure who they would select because they kind of share the show i guess mm -hmm. ian shaw has more of the narrative because he's playing his dad and he co-wrote the play and so watching him play his dad is very uh uncanny because it looks like Robert Shaw is right there on stage. Um, but I, I just, it's a long time ago, so I'm not sure if it's enough to get in. Um, yeah. And J.O. Sanders, if Pearly Victorious is uh, is a big hit with the nominators, I think has a, a great chance of getting in. But we'll have to see, like, we have some of these, like, slotted sight unseen. Like, we don't really know what Jim Parsons is going to bring to the mm -hmm. table for this because we don't know the play yet. Um, and I'm just like, I assume Alfred Molina is going to do, uh, <laughs> you know, awesome job as he always does with Uncle Banya. But we haven't seen what that production is like yet. So we shall see. Keep an eye on this one because there's a lot of things that are probably going to change uh, as more shows open. Let's uh, wrap up here by taking a look at best director of a play. Um, Henny Leon is out front in our odds for Pearly Victorious, but I have uh, Lila Nugabauer for appropriate out front. What is your lineup here? I have both of them in. Um, I have David Cromer in. I have Rupert Gould for Patriots. And I have Daniel um, Aachen, I believe is, is his last name, for Stereophonic. Um, mm -hmm. That means there's a lot of plays that I think are going to be strong contenders for best play or best revival who are not in this list. Um, but that's okay. Cause we have to make choices, but you know, um, there's no Sam gold for enemy of the people here in my, in my list. Um, there's a couple other, you know, tough choices to make, but those are my five. We have the same five, maybe not the <laughs> same order, but okay. um, I have Lila out front, Kenny Leon, Rupert gold, Daniel Aachen and David Cromer. Mm. And the person that I'm actually like have been toying with putting in, it's kind of sight unseen, is Lila part two yeah. for Uncle Vanya because she has two, uh, you know, major works this season. And that has the potential to be a huge event. We obviously haven't seen it yet, sight unseen, but it, uh, she would be, you know, the rare woman to wind up with two nominations in the same directing category which would be quite a feat. Um, Sam Gold is someone a lot of people also have. He like goes either way with the Tonys, um, sometimes in, sometimes out, but it's certainly a very like in-your-face production, and he's had to stage it in the round for Circle in the Square, so that could, could work to his advantage. Is there anyone else you feel like 
is in striking distance here? Um, I had, I actually had Lila for Uncle Vanya for a long time, and I just didn't want to have two slots right now, sight unseen. Um, so, but, but I, you know, I, depending on how that shakes out, um, that would be very exciting. Um, I guess just, I wanted to flag, um, Tina Landau for Mother Play. Um, yeah. another totally sight unseen, hard to kind of make sense of it, but she's just such a phenomenal director. Um, and I think pairing her with Paula Vogel um, and that cast is going to be very exciting. So, you know, I might have to make room for for her once we get to see the show. Mm -hmm. And I will say, you know, I talked about how Jaja's African hair braiding maybe has unfortunately like a smaller, like maximum threshold mm. of potential nominations in other plays. So if people are really wanting to recognize that, then we should not discount Whitney White from from this list either. Um, I don't know that it's like as big of a production as some other things that are gonna uh, appear here, but the directing is amazing. I think she really conjured up like, you know, you really bought all of these people in a tight knit community and you just immediately were drawn in to that whole world. Uh, and so I think it was amazing. Um, and a lot of people love that play got love letters across the board with reviews. So yeah. it, it, she could be one to break through. Well, David, we have a lot to sift over as the spring continues. So keep keep your eyes peeled for Gold Derby. We're going to be seeing a lot of shows uh, coming up shortly. Make sure as you see some shows, you put your predictions in and we will see how the how this all shakes out as the spring unfolds. So keep it right here. Mm -hmm. 